executive producer of Empire, Mr. Lee Daniels. He's somewhere. Um, he'll come out. Maybe I'll wait till, or I'll just, I'll vamp for a little while. Um, he's coming, he's coming. Lee. <laughs> He's fantastic. He's, he's one of the best interviews I've done in years. Uh, he is amazing. And uh, he's, uh, he's a champ. He's just a little late. Oh, Lee Daniels. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Welcome. All right, and then we're going to bring out his co-creator and EP, Danny Strong. And then executive producer, Brian Grazer. And executive producer, Eileen Chaikin. Um, LL, Lucius Lyon, Terrence Howard. His <laughs> uh, his his sometimes queen Cookie Lions Taraji P Henson. <laughs> uh, the man, one of the guys who just killed it up on stage, uh, Jamal Lyons, Jesse Smollett. The other one who just killed it on stage, um, uh, Hakeem Lyon, Brashear Gray. <laughs> and the final Lyon son, Andre Lyon, Trey Byers. Andre's wife, and a lady who loves a bib. Um, Rhonda Lyon, Caitlin Doubleday. And the lady that loves a lion man, whether it be a son or a husband, Anika Calhoun, Grace Keeling. Love your outfit. <laughs> Boo Boo Kitty. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, so everything that happened in that episode is between us. No spoilers. Yeah, right? no spoilers. Cone so we of should, silence. Yeah, it's cone of silence. So we should say now we're being live streamed uh, online on Fox.com. Um, so we're on the internet. Um, so uh, we should welcome all our people. And uh, for some of our fans at home, I think you maybe were hoping to see the performance, but we couldn't f sort of figure that out. So, anyways, there's a little glitch, but. But you're here for this, which is the, the, the key part, um, my show. Um, uh, but what has this week been like for you guys? Not this week, this last two months, three months, this ride. Because each week, Empire has grown in the ratings, which is unheard of, really, in this day and age. What has this been like for you all? Has this been just insane? Like, do you have, do, I mean, are you just popping bottles constantly? Has Fox bought you Range Rovers? Do you have islands? What, what's, what's it been like? Well, we all have Rolexes. We got, no, really, we got, Fox got us Rolexes last night. Pretty cool, right? You, you know, what you heard about Range Rover, what? Range Rover? What, what was that? Fox is buying us Range Rovers? Wait, wait, what? Season Beep. two, please. Uh -huh. oh, <laughs> It's but been, it's been, a, it's been, you know, for me, it's been a, a place where that you, you are so into the work that you don't really think about it. You, you're just interested in doing the best you can do. So Thursdays are nerve wracking, but you know, you really don't have time to appreciate it because you're so down under making sure that Danny and I are down under and Eileen 
Ryan, we're all down under making sure that you guys are getting what you get every week. So we really haven't been, I haven't, I'm speaking for myself, but I haven't really been able to appreciate it because uh, until now, you know, you, hear, you, you see the people and you see the reaction. This is the first time I've seen a reaction like this. It's very, I love you too. Thank you very much. So, yeah. What about for the rest of y'all? Like, Taraji, I mean, you must get people yelling at you, they own lines at you. I mean, do people, are people quoting you? Like, are people coming up to you on the street? Cookie cakes. Yeah, uh, I'm not, I'm cookie now. Um, I guess my dad must be turning in his grave because he did name me Taraji, but people want to call me Cookie. I don't know why. Thanks, Lee and Danny. Thank you. Um, it's been amazing. I, I will say this. When I got the script, I knew it was something special, and I knew that if it was handled with care, it could change the game, and that's what you're witnessing. Fox wasn't afraid to push the envelope. Uh, they found a bunch of rebels. They weren't afraid to pass the message on. And here we are, <laughs> changing the game. <laughs> for, the, for the rest of the cast, like, you know, Jesse and, and, and Brashear and, and uh, Trey, do you guys, this is one of the first big jobs you guys have had. Is this, what's this ride been like for you all? And even Grace and Caitlin, has this just been like, Crazy? It's different, you yeah. know. Um, I like going grocery stop shopping, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I can't do that anymore because I'm trying to get some cereal and somebody like, I can <laughs> I don't like what you did to Cookie. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just trying to get some food. So, like, but, you know, I appreciate it. You know, I'm working with Oscar-nominated actors and directors, and I'm honored. Yeah. It's funny because when we first started this venture together, we really hang out like a family. Like it, it's, we're always over somebody's house when we're in Chicago. And so they would always protect me. Oh, you can't go in the store. Wait a minute, you get in the middle. We gonna go get these bananas. In Target. Yeah, well who's gonna get in the middle now? <laughs> well, I can still get it. No, 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 no. I mean, I can still get more bananas in the store without being bothered than Taraji. <laughs> That's not true. Times have changed for you. <laughs> Why do you guys think this show has become a phenomenon? What is it about this show that's, that's hit so huge with people? Taraji P. Henson. No. No. <laughs> thank you. No. Well, thank you. But I cannot take all of the credit. I am not doing this show by myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I cannot. I'm Cookie is nothing without Lucius. Absolutely. I am nothing without my beautiful sons and these beautiful women right here. We are a team. We make empire. The writers, the producers. I, it's all of us. It's, it's a team effort, really. We honestly. are family. <laughs> I mean, honestly, when you really look at the show, it's such a, um, it's such a, a um, aside from the fact that the music is legitimately music that can stand on its own, you know, Timberland and Jim Beans and the incredible production team that we have um, behind us, it really set the tone, but at the same time, you know, you look at someone like Lee Daniels, he is, he's notorious for telling the truth. So, you know, tell the truth. Um, so, <laughs> but, but he's notorious for telling the truth and I think that what it says is that yes, it's very glamorous and it's, it's a, this incredible world of music and drama and the soap opera-ness of, of dynasty, but it's also very much tackling the real issues of what we are going through in a world, in our society today. And I think that what Lee and Danny and Eileen and Brian, and what, what everyone has, has achieved is just, just telling the truth, and that's what, that's kind of the, 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 the fluid thread between all of, I think, Daniel's uh, productions. We, you know what it is? I think that the, the networks, and I say this often, have, they underestimate the intelligence of everybody in this room. <laughs> Y'all all wanna see this, you know? And I think that Fox came to the plate hard. They, and, and, and when we, Dan and I created this, we really wanted to do a throwback to, uh, to Norman Lear's work, to the kind of stuff that he was doing, you know, where that through humor, through humor, you know, we are able to, uh, to feel the pain. And, and, and so often we, we do that with a wink of an eye. We're always winking at the eye, winking at the camera. 
So let's, let's talk about the building of this empire. You know, Danny, you basically, a few years ago, you were in your car, I believe, and you heard a, a story about like Diddy on the radio. That's right. And then, where, so then where did it go from there? I heard a new story and I just thought, hip hop is so cool, I gotta do something to hip hop. It was literally, it was just like, wow, hip hop's awesome. What? You, you are hip hop. I am hip hop. <laughs> And I still Daddy am. Daddy Strong is day. the reason why hip hop is alive That's right. today. <laughs> and then I instantly thought about, like, well, how would I do hip hop? And then I thought King Lear, because that's how people do hip hop, right? And then I thought about the line in Winter, and then I just kind of came up with these ideas. And then I thought, I should call Lee Daniels. And I had his phone number, which is crazy. So I called him. And uh, I pitched this idea to him as a movie. And he called me the next day and he said, I can't stop thinking about your idea, but I think it's a TV show. And then we just started talking about Dynasty in Dallas, but then also subverting the soap opera genre uh, with dealing with social issues, because it's very important in both of our works that we tackle social issues and we talk about things of, you know, deeper themes. And we thought that the idea of doing a soap that was also a gritty drama could be pretty cool. And, but it's funny because you don't know if it's gonna work. You don't know, and then we're here, and it seems to be working, so and, it's exciting. And then you have the music element, you know, the music element, the hip hop world, the hip hop world, and so we needed someone that would spearhead this to the networks, that knew that world. Someone that was able to deal with my crazy ass <laughs> and able to deal seriously with also the network. And that, that, that genius is Brian Grazier, so we're really, we, you know, that, that was, he's sort of that, <laughs> he's I know, that, wait, when you walk into Brian's office, he has three TVs playing, and one of them has BET. And, <laughs> and, and when, we, when we walked in, I turned to Lee, and I pointed at the BET, I'm like, see? This, this is the guy. <laughs> Those this were my guy. qualifications. <laughs> I heard, too, that, Lee, you found out that Brian produced Boomerang, and you were like, oh, yes. You know one thing? Hello. Here's Strange. the thing. Really, okay? Uh, I was going to say something else, but I can't say that. That's that famous Just Grace Jones. The Grace Jones line. Remember the Grace Jones line when she say says, it. you want that, you want that, you want that, you want that. Remember? Anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> anyway uh, that will remain quiet. I For those of you that yet. know Grace Jones um, and Boomerang. But when I saw, when I, when, we, I didn't even, you know, I was referencing it, you know, because, you know, when you're directing something, you, you, you steal. You steal from stuff. You steal from other people's work. I do. And so I kept going back to Boomerang. Boomerang, Boomerang, Boomerang. And I went, this, is, this man produced Boomerang. That was 100 years ago. And, I, <laughs> and, it, and it really was sort of like the foundation of uh, a part of the, the making of, uh, of Empire. The Brian, irony of it all. And Brian, you'd, wanna, you'd been interested in doing a hip-hop show for a while, I think, right? Well, yeah, I've been inter I'm very interested in that world, uh, beginning with meeting ODB, wondering who's, who calls themselves Old Dirty Bastard. <laughs> so I thought, I have to meet ODB. <laughs> and then that led to Slick Rick and other characters, and, and, eventually, and eventually turned me, it, you know, became 8 Mile with, that I uh, did with Jimmy Iovine and Dre and... Then that uh, eventually became American Gangster, and I just was in this world that I that I loved, and um, and then I was speaking to Danny, and later I was speaking to Danny, and then later to Lee, and they said, "Why don't you be part of this? Given you know some of the things you've done, including Boomerang." But and fortunately, I just seen um, I just seen the Butler, which I thought was amazing, literally so amazing. Brilliant on so many levels, but stylistically, they created a world that was so operatic and cool, and it was slightly heightened, but just heightened enough to make the entire thing a delicious experience. And look, the movie was an enormous hit, but I saw it literally, literally all alone, because I just thought, I have to see this film. Had my kids see it the next day, but everything about that movie, I think, helped inform this show, and I, personally, I'm just kind of privileged to be part of this show, and what a, a collegial team. I've produced a lot of television shows, but never anything quite like this, and certainly nothing ever as uh, volcanic as this. And then, I mean, talk about, you know, a show's only as good as the actors involved, and obviously, I mean, I think it, it's hard to imagine Empire without Terrence and Taraji. How did you, how did, how did this, how did they get involved in this? Well, um... Terrence, you <laughs> so, uh -huh. Well, I, I, look, they, they, were, they were both at the top of the list for just in obvious reasons. 
They're both uh, Oscar nominees. They're genius actors. I and wanted Taraji. Taraji, basically, we, Sky I, we Skyped. And, Tara and I, Taraji had not gotten the job yet. And Taraji, and I was talking to uh, another actor to star in it. I heard that you I, wanted... I'm keeping it quiet. Yeah. And so, so I was talking to another actor. So she says, well, I really, I, 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 if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this with Terrence Howard. And I was like, you ain't got the job yet to be telling me who you're going to do. And I, and I closed the, I told her to Danny. I said, Danny, I think we have our cookie. <laughs> I think, I think, and, and Terrence, he said Terrence, but Terrence and I were looking for something to do together. And uh, we were thinking about doing the Marvin Gaye story. We were thinking about all sorts of things. At, because he had just done Butler for, for, for us. And um, I didn't think he wanted to do movies. I mean, t television. And it turned out that, in fact, he did. So, um, and he, and he, wow, there you go. That's it, it worked out perfectly because I, I had always envisioned Terrence in the part. And the timing was perfect because right when Taraji said that, it was like, yeah, 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 Terrence. You know, and we had just such a wonderful experience working with him on The Butler. And he's such a genius, versatile actor. And it was just, he was always in my head for the role. And the two of them together, you know, they, Electric. they, they tested it. It was just like, it was like, you, you oh, I mean, I can't, I don't, oftentimes, and, and, and not to take anything away from the work they're currently doing, but when you see some of the tests of people, you know, you see the electric, the electricity that I don't even know whether I'm, I'm capable of directing. They, it's what they bring to the table as, as, as human beings, as spirits, and as actors. So it's, it was so powerful that it just, it just knocked me out. Okay, you got your props. I don't give them any props. When I heard that I had to go in chemistry read with Terrence, I was like, well, what the hell else do you need to see us do? And her <laughs> idea, Taraji's idea of a chemistry read is, is to slap the shit out of you. No, it was in... She slapped no. him yes, so hard. Yes, you did. You, so slapped, hard. Him so you hard. slapped him so hard. I had it was a handprint on my face for a month. It was embarrassing. You slapped him. Can you, you slapped uh, him. Can you you slapped it, him. You're making it sound like I'm a raving, crazy woman no. who just slapped the shit out of Terrence. She was, was Cookie. Cookie slapped Lucius. It was in the script. And it was in the script. <laughs> so, by the and way... we right, always <laughs> go there. And right after the slap, Lee turned to me and he went, she's cookie, right? And I went, yeah. And then he went, all right, bitch, you got the part. <laughs> You're so wrong, Danny. This is fan. We got, our, we got our suit on and stuff. That's what happened. Lee Daniels, you've destroyed my top knot. <laughs> 30 inches of hair, bitch! 30! <laughs> 30! Yes, honey, yes! Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it about Can you? Can you imagine a day on the set? Well, I've been on the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What is it about you two? Why, you know, what is, why do you guys have this chemistry? Is it, just, is it just this friendship that's been going back for, what, 15 years now? You haven't said anything, you go. Well, they haven't had sex. <laughs> that's, that's the key, I think. I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We never crossed that line. Terrence, you talk. <laughs> and don't say nothing crazy, because I'll bust you in the mouth. Tudu era penazuma brincadeira que foi crescendo. <laughs> okay, so this is why we work. Um, Terrence and I have known each other for what, 10 years? Over I'm 10 almost years? seven years. Almost seven years. No. I'm 28 years. now. <laughs> he didn't take his medicine. We've again. known each other since maybe 2003. Yeah. Since 2003. And I think what for Cookie and Lucius, the the love that they have is something that's undeniable. No time, no man, no woman can come in between it. And that's history. That's something you can't, you gotta, ha you gotta go that's through it. That's something that we have from yeah, we day have. one. I know his, all his, can I say this? Yeah. I've been through every relationship with him. <laughs> I know them all. I know all the babies, all the children. We hang out with our kids together. We've stayed in touch through projects. This is like really my friend in life. So that you can't write, that you can't make up. And when I got the script, I just knew that 
that chemistry was needed for Cookie and Lucius because they can say, I hate you, I can't stand you, slap the hell out of each other, and then in the next scene, they laughing they and figuring out how to it. figure out how to get rid of Camilla or <laughs> how to shoot somebody in the face. <laughs> Although I didn't help you shoot my cousin in the face. No, but the friendship. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't shot nobody. <laughs> uh, the friendship, that comes just from being brutally honest, you know. She was brutally honest from the first time I tried to sleep with her and the last time I tried to sleep with her. <laughs> Always brutally honest. And I just keep a brother on his toes. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> Oh dear. So you shoot the pilot, the pilot's obviously amazing, and then Eileen comes in to be showrunner, and Eileen, you told me when you saw the pilot, I felt the same way. I, when I saw the pilot, I was like, this is something special. Like, this is so different. This is, you know, it, uh, it's amazing. And you told me, I remember you said, it's a game changer. And what'd you, what did you mean by that? Why did you think it was such a game changer? I couldn't articulate it. I just know that I wasn't looking to do this. I was working on something. I didn't want to go to work on anybody else's show. My agent called me and said, there's a project written by Lee Daniels and Danny Strong. Will you read it? And I said, well, of course. It's written by Lee Daniels and Danny Strong. I will read it, but I'm not looking to go to work on someone else's show. And I read it, and it was really good. And they said, well, will you go look at the pilot? And so I went over to Fox, and they locked me in this little room, this little dark room with nobody else, and like under lock and key, top secret. And I watched this pilot thinking, I'm not looking to go to work on anybody else's show. And this, the pilot ended, and some assistant came and let me out of the little room, and I got on my phone, and I called my agent, and I said, I have to do this. This is a game changer. I've never seen anything like it. Tell me what it's going to take to get me this job. It was the alchemy of the cast, the brilliance of the concept, and the execution. But it's that magic that comes together just very, very occasionally. And when you say it, you just know that something really incredible has happened. And she's the showrunner. She's the one that makes this show run, period. We she wrote that it. episode that you just saw brilliantly. I mean, speaking of being a game changer, you know, there's all this sort of uh, talk now, of the Empire effect, that Empire is changing television. Television is becoming more diverse. You know, pilot season is being affected. What do you all, I mean, are you all, do you take pride in this? Are you excited about this? I mean, do you think it's changing the way Hollywood views people? I can say for a fact. Does anybody else... Okay, I can just say that. Who said? Who did it? Who said it? Can't tell my I'll face. say that I'm happy that I'm on this show because I'm white, and I probably would have <laughs> a, a much minute, more white? difficult yes. pilot yeah. season white? this year because I wouldn't be right for anything this year because how I'm did not she black slip through the cracks? <laughs> She's so Sharon Stone and Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm sick. She makes me gag, honey. Oh, Love her. Stop. Um, Keep going. <laughs> I lost my. Oh, this is what I'm gonna say. I, we did the Hollywood Foreign Press the other day, and they never once pointed out that it was a black show. Not one time did they mention. Well, you know, an all-black cast. Did you ever see? Mm -mm -mm -mm. They understood subject matter. They understood humans going through changes in life. You know, love and hate and loss has no color. And it's just, for me, that's what I was hoping that this show would do. So, Martin Luther King, we made it to the mountaintop! <laughs> I don't know what's more exciting, you know, that, that, you know, that my story's being told, our story's being told, or whether or not there's so many people of color that are working behind the scenes. And I mean that, and that women, is like, women, we got a lot of women, man, a lot of women. No, I think what's more important than the people of color working behind the scenes is the people of character that's working behind the scenes. That and come in all different colors. That's, that's a, that sums it all up. I mean, you mentioned- I'm sorry. <laughs> You mentioned your story, and Jamal's story is, is uh, taken somewhat from your life. Um, 
have you had, what's been the reaction? I mean, I've, I've done panels with you where, you know, men have stood up and said, thank you for telling my life story. Yeah. For you and Jesse, what's, what have the reactions been like from, from fans to you all? Has it been emotional? I mean, have they been really? Very emotional. Yeah. Very emotional and very good. Because what's happened is, is that, you know, homophobia is deep in the, in the African-American community. This is something that needs to be addressed. African-American women are dying of AIDS. It's no longer a gay disease. This is a black women's disease. Black women are dying because of the DL. And it's time to kick that door open. And I think that, you know, I think that, I think that we, I, I hope that if, I hope that if we can just get some people to come out of the closet, ain't nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? I'm here. I'm making a little bit of money. You know what I mean? And doing my thing. I think that, you know, We've, we've done it. We've done it. Yeah. I'm here. I'm making less money than Lee, but I still make a little money. I'm here. I'm a hundred thousand. No, um, for me, it's been, um, it's been a. Sorry, I'm a cancer, so I get hella emotional. But um, for me, it's been a moment because. Um, I get letters all the time from kids, both, both homosexual and heterosexual, that say that somehow Jamal um, made them understand themselves or the people around them a little bit more. You know, just the idea that his story is actually pretty universal, you know, regardless of sexuality, race, culture, religion. It's none of us in this room or in this world have at least one time in our life not felt that we did not belong, you know, or that we were misunderstood or that somebody had these, I said this earlier, that somebody has these preconceived notions about who we are and they know absolutely nothing about us. Um, but Jamal is a blessing to be able to play. Like I wake up every single morning and I thank God and then I thank Lee Daniels. <laughs> because, <laughs> because um, it's changed so many people's lives, but it's also changed mine. So just that, that ability to firmly stand and walk in your truth, it's the most beautiful feeling that you will ever have, you know? And then on top of it, the, the relationship of the brothers, yes, it's very, very problematic because we are the sons of Lucius Lyon. Um, but at the same time, it's very, very, the, the support that you see the brothers give Jamal, not in spite of his sexuality, but in no kind of care about his sexuality. He says something so strong about brotherhood, and that is really important to me. I love you. Speaking of the brothers, one of my favorite scenes, I think it was two episodes ago, was when you all were stuck in the elevator. And I mean, what would. Because you, you guys really come across as brother. You, you feel we are. so real. I mean, what was that, what was that scene like to shoot? Because I must have, I mean, you, were, you weren't obviously stuck in a real elevator, but that, it was intense, very emotional. What was that day like? I'll let Trey talk about that because he drove that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Trey Byers. I mean, that scene was reminiscent of love. You know, it's, it's why we're up here. It's why you guys are receiving it the way that you are the show. You know, it's all about love. We lead with love. You know, we're not, we're not pretending to be brothers. We are brothers. We're not pretending to be a family. We are family. And to be able to, to reveal or to show society what we all look like, you know, whether it's, you know, wh whatever our situations may be and still find that love, you know, I think that that's what, that's what aided, you know, me, that you know, lean on me, bringing somebody back, you know, from wherever, whatever state, you know, outside of, of where they would be normally, you know, it's, it's life, you know. But you ain't got to spit in our face. <laughs> Brother, that's life too. <laughs> Love you, man. Also, I heard Trey, I heard you have a really good singing voice, actually. Yes. And you're the only one that doesn't really sing. Yeah, sing some. <laughs> above my pay grade. Above my pay grade. Uh, you know? Go ahead, Trey. You need a straight person, I think, in this whole thing, you know? You, and, and it, it No it pun intended. <laughs> well played. Um, no, but, you know, yeah, so you, he's ostracized for a reason or feels ostracized or isolated for a reason, and it helps 
for you all to see where he can go. Or, or it aids him to get to that place to not be able to fit in with a musical family. But yes, I do sing. Google him, baby. <laughs> you want me to sing? I'll sing some. Yeah. What am I singing? Taraji, what am I singing? Like center stage. Center stage. Center yeah. stage, do it right. Yeah, this is do amazing. Do it like a Let's get out. For you, Lee. What are we singing? Sing what you want, baby. Do you. Lately, I have had the strangest feeling. <laughs> with no vivid reason here to find. Hey. Yet the thought of losing you's been hanging around my mind. Bye. Yes. No, you yes. try to take my. <laughs> yes, God. Take yes, that. God. Take that, Lucius. Yes, take that, Lucius. Baby, sing it. And cut. Just the other night. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That's the great thing about this Eileen. cast. This cast is amazing. <laughs> you come to the set. This one will be playing the piano. Malik Yoba will grab the guitar, singing. I mean, the entire cast is very musically inclined. Yeah. No, I'm not singing. <laughs> I, I, I just. You're going to have to wait for uh, season two. But that scene that you saw tonight between Lucius and Jamal, that was not just a performed scene, that was a created scene. Yeah. They created that song together. But that's, just, that's, the, that's, that's how safe this set is. I, I can personally say I've been doing this a long time. Um, and I've never been on a television. I, I really hate TV, I'm just gonna say it. I don't like it because I've always felt like trapped in a little box. Literally speaking, you got to stick to these words right here. But it's like, but if I say it like this, the audience might connect better. <laughs> you got to say it like this. So finally, I get to this <laughs> incredible project and I say a little something and then they yell cut and the crew falls out. And usually Danny, say it, say it, keep it on, do it again, say it. What else you got? Say it again. <laughs> That's me. That's crazy. That's me. <laughs> I, I, no, that's Keep amazing. it. Say it again. What else you got? So then I'm like, what well, can I say this? And what does Lee say? Lee is like, cut it in half. Throw it away. Half of that. I can be a little big if you haven't noticed. So. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but my point is, is that it's a place where you can be as creative as you want to be. And it's, it's a safety net where you can be uninhibited. And that's what art is supposed to be. Unrestrained, unrestricted, free, free to breathe and live. And that's what you get with Empire. I'm so happy. When we did this, Danny and I both feel very strongly about this, that we don't go by the words. I know as a director and a writer, like I just say, okay, I, I hate this. Figure it out, y'all. Now, now go, go, on, go, on, go and say something to make it your, your own. And Danny comes from a place of, you tell him, Danny. Well, I spent many years on sets as an actor. And on some shows, they're, they're you know, crazed about it being word perfect. And for me, uh, you know, well, it's like I didn't say the. I said uh, the or whatever. And it gets you in your head. And then I'm just trying to be word perfect as opposed to playing the scene. So with our show, I said, you know, if you want to tweak it a little bit, if you want to, you know, make it your own, just go ahead, just play. And we've gotten so many amazing moments out of it. And then on top of it, you know, we're on a network and we're doing a show in a hip hop world. And there's a lot of bad words in hip hop, <laughs> but we can't use those bad words in our show. And I think that the actors bringing their own authenticity to the dialogue. I mean, the scenes are the scenes, but they're still just, they're doing twists on them and, they're, and they're, they're making tweaks. And some of those tweaks are genius, like Boo Boo Kitty. <laughs> just, she just came up with it. So, so it's, it's a, you know, creating a creative environment, exactly what Did Toronto I said. do that? And it's all in the nuance. It's, it's, it's really all in the nuance, as opposed to saying the F-bomb, it's all in the look. And the look can say, the F-bomb way stronger than using the F-bomb. And uh, kudos to all the actors. Grace, you too, and over there. 
I great. think they got shuffleboard at the VA hospital now. I want to get over there, can we? They got shuffleboard and bingo. You can look for crazy, zany things like that coming uh, from Terrence. You'll be like, what the hell is he talking about? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Caitlin, I want to hear about the bib. Because when you read that on the Ooh, page, was that, did you think that would be a thing when you read that? Did you think people would be like, the bib? I mean, I just, I, the bib has become a thing. I know. It's more famous than me. <laughs> <laughs> you have people sending you bibs? Um, I've bought some. Actually, they not to use, okay? Uh -huh. Just to keep as a keepsake. Um, they gave it out as like wrap gifts uh, that said Empire Season 1 on bibs to everybody, which was awesome. That's what we do on Empire. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I remember um, Lee like cackling about something he had written in episode two when I was meeting the writers and they were like, we, he was like, we wrote something for you today that I don't know if Fox is gonna let us keep in. And it was that bib. And I'm surprised that they let us keep it in, but I think coming up with things that push boundaries that you don't think will actually make it on TV and do, that's what you get, you know? I, you break Twitter or whatever. The writer that wrote that piece, uh, Malca, uh, Malcolm, has, Spellman. Malcolm Spellman, who's one of the great writers that we have in the room. He, he said, you know, like, you know, she put on a bib to go down on I, And I go, and, and then he immediately stopped because he's used to being in rooms where it wasn't accepted. And Eileen and I looked at each other and we were like, go for it, go for it. And keep coming up with them bibs, you know what I mean? Because that is what makes provocative television, stuff like that that makes you go, whoa. So, and, and, and the execution of, of, of Andre, and <laughs> I mean, you know, the whole, the, the bib moment is, a, is, 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 is my favorite moment. <laughs> and there were so many conversations about the bib before, during, and after, and like every time there was a question about should this really be in the show, I would just say, Lee won't lose the bib. Don't, don't try to take the bib away from Lee. <laughs> I got a question. This is also the sickness of Lee Daniels, though. <laughs> Because Lee enjoys making, like, putting things in there that are groundbreaking and all that type of stuff, but then he laughs knowing that we will have to do it. He'll be on the phone with me for the bib. He was on the phone. He's like, I got this bitch. It's gonna put on the bib. And she's gonna do this. And he loves it so much. It's insane to me. Um, wait, Grace, before I, I, we have some audience questions. Before I go to those, I want to know, Grace. Do you, are you Boo Boo Kitty, like, in the supermarket? Like, do people scream that at you now? Are you, is that, like, your new name? They better not. <laughs> no, um, here's what I have to say about Boo Boo Kitty. It is, it is not easy playing an antagonist. It's not. This is very new for me, this whole experience, this role. But two things I've learned. The first one is, is that this particular role positions me to be working with Taraji and Terrence. Who would say no to that? Okay, that's number one. Number two is, whenever I read in the script <laughs> something that I wouldn't do and something that I need to negotiate with myself um, in order to play it truthfully, I remember that when we expect perfection from our characters, that means that somewhere in our lives, we're expecting perfection, whether it's from ourselves or the relationships that we're in, and that's impossible. But when we can bring ourselves to have compassion for and empathy for flawed characters and respect that part of them and understand that we are always in life doing the best that we can in our given circumstances, then you can find some truth. And so that's how I approach her, you know? All right, so we have, we have questions from the audience. Uh, so the first question is from uh, Jamal Pittman. And this is for anyone. Jamal, um, this show has inspired so many up-and-coming African-American actors. Any advice for those of us trying to make it to the next level and, and experience similar success? Uh, <laughs> Hakeem, Hakeem. Yeah, Hakeem. Hakeem, answer that question. Well, what you need to do is... <laughs> Nah, but I'm um, just kidding. You know, just stay on it and just stay focused, you know? Don't, don't get distracted from the cougars and all types of stuff like that. But just stay on a mission and keep your blinders on. Know what you want in life. Um, and then 
We have a question for Taraji. How involved are you in picking out Cookie's wardrobe? Th this is from um, Aka Brown, I think her name is. Aka? Uh, Aka Brown, sorry. Aka, honey, get it sorry. right. Okay. Um, okay, so they, we've all decided that Cookie is an animal, so to speak. Um, one that prays. Um, so she's into a lot of uh, prints, and you know, so we all decided that. Um, there also needed to be an arc. You know, she's, she went away for 17 years, so she needs to be 17 years behind the curb in her fashion. So sometimes she puts on a little too much print. It might make your eyes cross, but you know, it's cookies, it's what she does. So, I mean, you know, me, I know what looks right on my body. I understand who this woman is. I understand uh, the time warp that she walked out of. Um, so when they, they, they do all the shopping and they'll bring like a rack of stuff to me and I'll go, eh, this, 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 or this. And then I try it on and whatever fits and looks right, that's what I pick. And then um, they'll put the jewelry in my room and usually I just try to put it all on because Cookie would. <laughs> all right, this question is from Regina. Uh, Terrence, was music or acting your first love? And she says, P.S. I met you in D.C. when you were promoting your album. It's a very simple question, Terrence. Simple, simple. You want to go to the VA and play pool or whatever, remember? Shuffleboard. Shuffleboard. Music. Pythagoras said a rock is nothing but frozen music, so music, music. Music! <laughs> All right. For the whole cast, for everyone, even the, in the producers and creators, uh, describe your reaction when you first saw the premiere ratings and the reaction on the set. What was the reaction on set like? Because you guys shot the first, like, what, 10 in a bubble before it premiered. So it must have been amazing to see that kind of response. We were drunk at... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we... It was fun. Somebody else talk. We were on a plane. We were on, like, first class, right? We were on, like, a plane back to Chicago, Taraji, you know, the whole set, and... Um, I hear a stranger tap me. He like, congratulations, young man. I'm like, you gonna wake me out of my nap? Like, what? Yeah, what is you? What's going on? The guy that congratulations on season two. So then I look back at Dre, and Dre is like, what, what, what? And Taraji is like, yes! And everybody's going crazy. So that's how we found out. In a nutshell. We got we found out we were coming to the TCA in in LA and we were all asleep on the plane because we were coming from shooting literally and then went straight to the um, airplane and got on it and so this guy was a producer from Chicago PD or something and he was like oh my god I love the show we didn't know who he was we fell asleep we wake up he land we are landing. He's the first one that gets juice on his phone, and he's like, oh, guys, congratulations, you got picked up for season two. And we're like, wah, wah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we walked off the plane with a little different swagger, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> we don't talk that much anymore. Yeah. They put me up to it. That's why I have no voice. Um, Rashir, I want to ask you, what is it like to take a bath with Naomi Campbell? <laughs> It's a great question. It's a great question. I can actually I answer think, that. That's not true. I'm just joking. I think, you know, it's every man's dream to be in a hot tub with Naomi Campbell. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Every man's dream. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but look, no. But, you know, in a real, you know, just imagine, you know, I get to go to work with an iconic supermodel and get paid for it. So it's like, that's good on any bad day. And, um, but, you know, she's honorable. She's flawless at what she does. And it's an honor to work at, with Miss Camilla, baby. <laughs> For sure. So what can you guys say about, about season two? You're starting to sort of break story and talk about it. What's, what, what would you like to see? Or what, sort of, what's the, what are the, maybe the beginning stages of plans? What can you say? Well, I mean, we want to we wanna stay true to the story. We want to stick to our guns. We don't want to feel like, wow, this is so successful. We have to outdo it. We want to bring the spirit of storytelling that got us here in the first place and continue it and tell truthful stories that are important, that are juicy soap opera, but still have depth. 
And there, there's no reason to switch gears because of what's happened. It's stay the course. And I, I'd like to see us to go back into the ghetto, back into, you know, back into, we're, we're dealing with the opulence of, of, of being rich, but what, what, what's, how are, how are the, 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 the streets thumping right now? I want to go into the streets right now so people can see what poverty is like right now. Uh, I, I have a question. <laughs> I read somewhere where you were courting Oprah. Love that. But then you want less opulence. Can you explain, Mr. Daniels? <laughs> well, she would be playing herself, darling. Uh, do you mean less opulence from Miss Oprah or in the show or Cookie? I just need to be clear. Well, in this scene that I was thinking about, she would rag, uh, she'd roll you around on the floor and, 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 and take your wig off. Just wig? answer the question. Who wears a wig? <laughs> who, who wears a wig? <laughs> you, you, you took your wig off? I'm trying to... <laughs> <laughs> no, because people are asking me. They're like, what do you mean less opulent? We're, Does Cookie not wear furs? What does that mean? What is the question exactly? <laughs> there was a write-up. There yeah. was a headline. Yeah. Lee Daniels talks second season. He's courting Oprah, and the show will be less opulent. I wasn't misquoted. I wasn't misquoted. I was trying to give you I an didn't out. I say you were. I just asked for a clarification. No, I think that that's a conversation that we'll have backstage, Cookie. <laughs> He's sweating, too. What's up with that? Taraji, there's going to be a lot of opulence. Next question. I, <laughs> less do opulence. You have, do you have dream like guest stars, though? I mean, I would like to see Miss Mariah Oprah? Carey. I know, but I would like to see... Mariah? Her. Yes, Mariah. We got a lot of them. Jesse, who do, you, who do you want? I want Mariah Carey. Yeah. I want Janet Jackson. I want Kanye West. Janet Jackson, can you... Yes. Can you find Janet... Ja Where is Janet Jackson? Find her. Find her. Um, She's in Dubai. I know. All right. Well, that's fine. Let's get Janet. Let's get, let's get her back here. Um, well, you guys, Empire is, it's, we have to wrap things up, but Empire, obviously, we all love it. We're obsessed with it. Season two next year. Uh, we can't wait, or, you know, at some point. And uh, thank you all for, for being here. Thank you guys all for coming. Thank you all so much. much. Watch the season finale next thank week. You. you guys are a gem. You're a prince. <laughs>